Hello Makeup Monsters! Today I'm bringing you an outrageously fun and feather fueled collaboration with my good friend Ian Amos, aka Titches Twitches, nature guru and bird enthusiast. We decided to turn Ian into the endangered rapper fruit dove in order to promote bird fair who have chosen this bird as their bird of the year. For more information on bird fair and how you can help, check out the links in the description, but for now, let's just get into it. I've begun by applying a BB cream, foundation and concealer. All the products used in this video can be found in the description, but if you have any questions just drop a comment and I'll reply. So next I'm going to apply a bald cap over Ian's head. I've used a fairly inexpensive one from Amazon, which does the job just fine. If you actually want to make someone look bald, I would recommend making your own bald cap or buying one from a professional brand and you'll see why shortly. So you want to pull the bald cap over the ears and the top of the head as straight as possible and then when you've got the shape apply some adhesive under the cap and gently press the cap into it. Here I've used liquid latex but you can also use Prosade or even spirit gum to stick it down. Make sure to do a patch test for all of these products first to ensure you or the person you're working with is not allergic to anything. So I've cut around the ears but unfortunately the bald cap was a bit tight and this caused it to slightly rip. Do not fear though, we're going to cover it with feathers and craft fur. I've stuck down these edges and cleaned things up with the scissors. Next I've applied a small amount of glue stick to Ian's eyebrows as a layer of protection. If you look at the wrapper fruit dove, you'll notice it often has a pink ring from the top of its head coming down to its beak. So we're going to try and recreate this. I just painted an outline of Ian's head using pink face paint. You can use pink lipstick if you don't have face paint. Next, I've outlined the area with adhesive and measured out a small piece of pink craft fur to go around the area. Once applied, I repeat the process going inwards towards the centre of Ian's head. I got this fur from the range, but you can use whatever you can find at your local arts and craft shop. The whole point is to have fun and make it your own. I then apply a small amount of yellow face paint above Ian's eyes, again just as a base colour to appear under the feathers. Then with some white craft fur I work my way around Ian's head covering any visible bald cap or hair. I then apply some white foundation again, just as a base to pale Ian up. You'll notice the wrapper fruit dove has white undertones, so doing this will actually create a highlight on his feathers, making everything appear a bit brighter. I work my way down his neck and blend this out with a blending sponge. This is where things get fun. It's time to create the bird beak. Firstly, use some clay or even Play-Doh to mould the bird beak of your choosing onto a face cast or, if you don't have a face cast, you can use a 2 litre bottle. Just take into account the nose of your model. The fruit dove has quite a pointed beak, so I've tried to roughly create this. I've used some sculpting tools to create texture and ridges on the mould, so applying a few lines vertically down the beak worked quite well. You want to then mould the bottom piece of the beak, moulding a ridge in the centre of your sculpture. Create the same ridges and texture and when you're happy, cover the clay with a generous amount of liquid latex until it's fully covered. Wait for this to dry or dry it with a hairdryer and then repeat the process. 
You can use a Q-tip or disposable brush or sponge. You want to apply a minimum of three to four layers, but maybe a few more just to ensure the prosthetic is strong enough and won't tear when you're working with it. Once dried, powder the beak and begin to remove it from the clay, slowly peeling it away from the edges, applying more powder as you go. Once peeled off, turn the prosthetic inside out and cut it so that the two pieces are separate. Turning the prosthetic inside out will reveal all the amazing ridges you've created. And now it's time to put it back onto your sculpt so we can begin painting. I then begin by painting the beak yellow using the same yellow face paint as earlier. I make sure to paint the bottom half of the beak too. I then use a beige face paint to colour the upper edge of the beak. I then layer this with a reddish orange colour. The basic rule is, often the more layers and textures you can create, the more realistic the beak. You can use beige, orange or reddish colour around the edge, making sure to blend these out. I get my face paint from Snazaroo, but you can use whatever you have. As you're not applying the paint directly to your face, you have a bit more freedom. Next, I've applied a dark red around the edges, bearing in mind I'm going to cut these down, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Finally, using a thin brush gives some colour to a few of the ridges, just to build them up. I've used a tiny bit of red, orange and black, making sure again to blend these out when necessary. Now to apply the beak to Ian's face. If you're still watching, I'd really like to encourage you to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button, and I'd love to see your final look if you recreate this. Firstly, I place the beak on his face to get an idea of the size. I then cut this down when necessary and stick it to Ian's nose using a small bit of wax. This makes the prosthetic appear a bit fuller. You can fill it with wax or even cotton wool. I'd recommend wax because it also acts as an adhesive. I then stick down the edges with liquid latex and repeat the same process for the bottom half of the beak. Next, I decided to top up the white face paint and make sure to blend this out. I then applied some more yellow to the eyes and below the beak, feathering down Ian's neck. As you can tell, I've applied a feather fringe around Ian's neck. This is one from eBay and is one meter in length. The wrapper fruit dove often has a lot of green on its wings, so I've used green as a source of inspiration. I then applied a small amount of black face paint between the upper and lower beak in order to create a bit of depth. Next I apply the last of the pink craft fur just under the feather fringe. I'm using liquid latex to stick everything down. To cover up the edge of the feather fringe I'm using single light green and pink feathers which I'm going to use to build all the way up the neck and face. Notably, you don't have to use lots of latex because they stick very easily but make sure to build up your layers as you're going. You're going to need a few packs of feathers for this. I've then continued to apply the feathers all up Ian's neck, which has quite a nice effect. If you can't find the craft fur we used for the head, I'd recommend just sticking down feathers in the same way I'm doing the neck. You will need more though in order to cover the bald cap. The population of the wrapper fruit dove is estimated at about 270 to 274, so not many at all. Check out the links in the description to learn a bit more and see how you can help. To finish off the look, I've given Ian a pair of white wings I got online. If you want the wings to be bigger, you could buy a generic pair and then build them up with other craft features. It all depends on what you want, but as I said, the main thing is for you to have fun and make it your own. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and tell me if you do so I can give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you and good night. All our love from Lauren and Ian.